Welcome to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. It's Sunday, September 15th, and you're watching Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS, presented to you by Fisherman's Marine and Outdoor. And there's no question that everybody's going over there right now. We got a lot going on here in the Northwest, a lot of options, fishing, hunting, and everything in between, for, for that matter. I mean, there's just so many things that we could be doing these days, and hopefully you're getting out and having some fun if you are. Make sure you take some photos and videos. We're going to be showing a bunch of them here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and, of course, we'll show you how uh, you can get those into us uh, so we can show you off as well. So make sure you pay attention if you've been sending those photos in. So we'll be doing that in just a bit. Also, uh, as always, we'll have all the information that you want for this upcoming week. Fish counts, river levels, this and that. Not the most exciting thing, but if you are still targeting Chinook on the Columbia with our extension that we have now, it's a good time to go. I'm getting reports this morning from everywhere. Above Bonneville, below Bonneville, way up high, down low, low. I mean, there's certainly some options to be had there, but I don't know about you, but I want to talk about duck hunting. <laughs> In today's Chevy Silverado tech tip of the week, the question, the first question of the year about duck hunting, Thank you, because it's right around the corner. Uh, Y'all know I could talk about that for, well, shows, multiple shows, many, many, many shows, all in a row, but you'd all quit watching me. Uh, but in the end, the question was about duck calls, how to tune them correctly. The premise of the question from one of our Facebook fans was that they have a call uh, that they've been using for two or three seasons, from what I gather. They took it apart, and now they can't get it to work right, which is not uncommon quite honestly, and there's a lot of folks that use duck calls or try to use duck calls, I'm just having fun, uh, that when you do take them apart, it's pretty much over, uh, and it shouldn't be. It's intimidating, but they're very, very simple. There's not a whole lot to it, but we'll kind of cover that in that uh, Chevy Silverado Tech Tip of the Week. A couple of different things. We'll talk about if you were to add a new read, which is kind of how this happened. Uh, also, if you had to cut a read, yes, you can do that. But make, make sure you have backup reads. Let's just make sure we go there first. Uh, corks as well, how to maintain those, and the soundboard. You might wonder, well, what's a soundboard? Well, that's what the read is. If you're not a duck hunter, just work with me. It's that, that's what the read's slapping against, okay? That's the soundboard. Well, all those are extremely sensitive. We'll talk about that again in that Chevy Silverado Tech Tip of the Week. And if you have been chasing Pike Minnow, we'll have your, your reward numbers for this past week. It's been an epic year. Uh, it, th there's been a lot of pike minnow removed. I don't know if it's quite a record yet, but if it's not, it's getting close. And that top person could very well break the record uh, for money made. I mean, well into the six, six digits. If you don't know what that means, that's over $100,000. Catching fish, we'll have that. Uh, also, our very special guest, and I say that with all love because he's one of my best friends, uh, Bill Monroe Jr. from Bill Monroe Outdoors. We're gonna check in with him live from the Columbia uh, and find out how the fishing has been for, hey, is that Mason? I think that's Mason. Anyway, Mr. Schlemico. Uh Anyway, uh, he's out on the Columbia this morning and they're doing very well. Uh, he's been doing great this morning already. Lots of op opportunities. We'll find out how things are real time. But I got to talk to him about, we did get this extension. That was the big question this past week. I want to talk to him about what's going forward when it does close here in just a handful of days again, all right, or at least not again, for the first time, post-extension. Will it happen again? Will we get more time? Uh, and what are they looking at to make that decision? So we'll have that with Bill. He's significantly smarter than I am at this stuff. He's right in the middle of it. Uh, every day, it seems like. Uh, so we'll find out uh, what his thoughts are on that and what he's going to do if that closure, when that closure does happen, where is he going to move to? What's he going to do next? Right? Because there's a lot of options going through November and into December, depending on conditions uh, of where you like to go after him. So we got a good one. We got a lot going on, but we're going to take a couple of your calls. It's the viewer hotline. The viewer ho hotline. Uh, it's 503-548-6777, and it will have its new name uh, coming very, very quickly. Okay, we do have a couple of reports that are coming in. Should we take the live report? All right, he's... Okay, let's go... 
<laughs> a little time delay there, everyone. It's live television, just bear with me. Uh, Mark is from the Columbia. We spoke with him yesterday. Now, Mark, I gotta tell you, man, we've been loving your reports from up above Bonneville. He's fishing around the mouth of the Deschutes area. We really do appreciate you taking the time each weekend, uh, the last handful of weekends to share this. Uh, but I'm hoping that things are a little bit better for you this morning. Uh, unfortunately, good morning, Owen, and unfortunately, not really, because the wind's just kicking our butt today. It, it was supposed to lay down, and it's probably blowing 17, and obviously, that makes it very difficult to throw. Yes. I, do you ever change things up? Do you, like, try to hover fish, change what you're trolling with? Do you, do you ever change what you're doing when that wind kicks up? And if you've never fished there before, everyone, that west wind will literally change everything. Uh, but do you ever change yeah. things up when you're up there? Yes, it pretty much, for us anyway, it pretty much turns into a strictly uphill troll. I'm trying to go downhill right now, and it's very, very difficult. Okay, so it makes sense. So you get down river, turn yeah. around, and just let the wind kind of take yeah, you Yeah, so, yeah, so it, it, pretty much going forward, we're just going to have to motor to the bottom and then turn around and try and troll uphill. Uh, with the winds really kicking up, I'm, I'm going to be lucky if we can get another hour in. How, how's the crowd this morning, Mark? It was about the same, so I'm going to guess there was between 50 and 60 boats. Uh, I've only seen probably two netted and one was the two leaf. Um, and at the boat ramp this morning, there was a couple of boats that came in and said they had stopped fish right away, so that early morning bite. But, uh, so far for us, and pretty much everybody else, it looks like it's been pretty slow. Now, everyone, you can, you can hear that wind in the background. The west wind in the gorge, as a lot of you may know, is, is very, very difficult to deal with. Uh, he, what he had said there is going downhill and then trolling back with the wind. It does make things a little bit easier. Mark, up to this point, it's the middle of September. You've been fishing up there for a long time. Has it been slow overall for this season up there around that mouth of the Deschutes area? I, I think so, because typically this time of year is really new for us. A lot of times that first and second week of September is probably the best fishing. Yeah. Um, and like a, a week or so ago, we got super, super sunny, so it's not too bad for us. Uh, so, but like the last few days, the wind's howling in. Um, a lot of guys are straining out. So we catch yeah, very much with the wind. With all these fish over Bonneville and heading your direction over the Dalles, uh, you would just think that they uh, that the fishing would be better, but they, maybe they're just flying right by. It's it's tough to tell uh, what those fish will do. But Mark, again, where you want it, how you want it to look, as the boat is bouncing around and you're kind of like serpentining around in the in the troll. Yes. Yeah. The presentation could be very difficult. I got one idea for you, and I don't know if this is going to help at all, but I got to throw it out there. He mentioned presentation. With that boat bouncing around, if you're running 360s like at least Mark has been doing, one of the things that you could do, and this goes way back to Mr. Bob Tolman, a man that's no longer with us. I love that guy. Uh, but he would troll plugs, and that was one of the reasons it that it was effective is that it, those plugs would stay in one spot when you're bouncing around. Who knows? Maybe that'll give you a better presentation. But, Mark, uh, again, we appreciate you taking the time to call us, especially in the conditions that you're in. We appreciate it as always, man. We look forward to hearing from you more in the future. All right. For all all right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, for all of you that have been sending photos in, let's go through some of those. And, of course, we'll show you exactly how to send them. Uh, also, we have a video at the end of all these uh, photos that we're going to show you this morning. And at some point in time, you're going to start seeing some elk and some deer and some bear and some other uh, success out there. Uh, but we've got to get through everything first. Still lots of salmon photos coming in. Uh, of course, that's a nice big Chinook. Uh, Jesse, uh, nice fish, by the way. Birthday walleye. Uh, this is Levi Day. Uh, nice walleye. Just a great photo, too. Look at the background. God, you got to love the Columbia. Just a nice walleye. That's at least... Four, five, six tacos. Uh, Columbia Hog, DJ sent this in. Uh, I know right where that is. I'm not going to say anything. Great photo. Uh, thanks for sending it in as well. Again, everyone will show you how to do it. There's a successful day. Great day at Bowie 10. Uh, Sandy sent this in. Uh, yeah. Uh, and there's still been some great fishing down there, let alone the silvers. But... But that little window of Chinook opportunity still been very, very good. Isaac's first fish, uh, Papa, <laughs> Papa Mullen sent this in. Uh, yeah, what is that? Is that a silver? 
yeah, it looks like a silver, hatchery silver to me. Uh, nice fish. Uh, another one. Oh, hogline fish. Um, this is Michael. That's a toad. I mean, there's just been some really nice ones getting caught. This morning, we're going to check in with Bill here in a little bit. They sent in a photo of one that they got this morning. That was just a dandy. Look, another one. Just some beautiful one. Mouth of the Calyx. That's been some interesting fishing. <laughs> Not going to go too far. Oh, okay. Now they're cheating. Way down south, Sea of Cortez. Uh, I've been there. I wasn't chasing fish. I was chasing doves. Uh, Sarah, it looks like yellowtail. I believe I got that correct. Not yellowtail uh, tuna. Although, is there a yellowtail? I don't know. Here he goes. <laughs> Sumner Strait humpbacks. Wow. That is just cool. It's one of the reasons why I was, I wish that I was more into the saltwater fishing, but I ain't. But these are some of the things that you can see out there, especially off our coast, Oregon, Washington, California, all that. You can see some, ah, that's just cool. Alaska, very cool. Has anybody ever seen any of those videos out there, the kayakers where one of these humpbacks came up and swallowed them? Look that up, it's on YouTube. There you go, it's the Fox 12 app. Once you download that, find out their GPS and it will literally line you out on how to upload your photos and videos and we show you off at the beginning of each one of our shows. Okay, I've got Brian from Tillamook. Brian, if you can hear me, bear with me. When we come back from this break, we're gonna take his call and we're gonna have all the information that we try to get to and a couple of reports. Although I kind of already threw them out there, haven't I? Anyway, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Outdoor GPS.